please don't do it. Chill, man. I thought y'all said it was good, bro. Everybody keep asking for it. Uh, uh, why Hollywood wants Cat Williams dead? Uh, maybe because he exposed the whole industry. Um, maybe that. Maybe that's a reason. Recently spoke out against countless powerful Hollywood figures in a podcast with Shannon Sharp, and they are not happy. What makes Kat's expose so dangerous is that tens of millions of people around the world believe he is telling the truth. This man is speaking against the evils of this world. Thank you, Cat Williams. This generation is hungry for the truth. Thank you, Cat, for speaking your truth. We absolutely believe you. They canceled me for talking about Harvey Weinstein before the thing came out, but he offered to suck my penis in front of all my people at my agency. Now, a lot of what Cat said in this podcast cannot be proven true or false, yeah. but because he is funny, a good storyteller, Della, and most importantly, up. confident with his words. This allowed him to convince millions that he's telling the truth. Plus, we all know that celebrities don't often speak their true thoughts on the industry or politics out of fear of being canceled. However, some things he said are just straight up lies. I'm probably reading 3,000 books a year from the time that I'm eight years old to the time that I'm 12. My next project was to read the whole encyclopedia set. So when you're like six, seven years old, you read the whole encyclopedia set, you think you're one of the smartest people in the world. Right. So apparently Kat read the entire encyclopedia and read eight nonfiction books every single day from age eight to age 12. This is impossible and it's a lie. Throughout this <laughs> entire podcast, Kat's- This is impossible and it's a lie. I'll, I'ma just let you know that now. I don't like, I don't think anybody believe, like literally believe that though slipped in bold-faced lies which massively contradicts his preaches of spreading the truth. No, nope. I feel like it's because the things that he was saying like uh when he spoke on certain things outweighed just the kind of little subtle bullshit things he would say. Nobody knows why liars lie and that's why I had to come on the program. Cat exists in this middle ground where nobody can really determine if he is telling the truth, if he is lying, if he's telling a joke, if he's on drugs, if he has a mental illness, or if he is clearly exposing the dark and sinister nature of Hollywood. So today I am going to give you as much context as possible so you can make that decision for yourself. Mm. Starting with his earliest introduction to Hollywood on the set of his very first movie, Friday After Next, where Cat played the Body role bet. of Money Mike. But in the script, Cat alleged that Money Mike was originally supposed to be violently assaulted. Who's the go to rap? Slim Jesus, no debate. Assaulted. The truth of the matter is, the Money Mike in the original script got raped in the bathroom. Cat Williams had to take the risk in front of the studio. That nigga came, talked his shit, nobody touched him. Then he, then he got out. Then he got out the game. The realest nigga in there, bro. And the cast and our powers that be in his very first movie and say respectfully, the problem with Friday After Next is we're trying to make a classic comedy. And this comedy involves a rape. And rape is never funny, no matter who it happens to or what the circumstances are. If you would allow me to allow us to do this movie without a black man getting ripped in it, I promise you that it will be twice as funny. Ice Cube, who wrote, produced, and acted in the film, denied these allegations. The second thing I want to clear up, it was never, I would never shoot a scene uh, in a movie, especially like Friday, um, where you actually see this happening on camera. That ain't my style. If you check out any of my movies, they not raunchy. But it's because Kat said things like this throughout his interview caused fans to cast doubt on anyone who denied his claims. These people are not powerful. Satan can't create anything. That includes blessings for his people. Do you know what the number one job of somebody that sold their soul in Hollywood is? What? Is to act like it didn't happen. They all do the same job. Cat believes he has a more legitimate and honorable legacy than the other comedians he has been associated with throughout his career. These men, Cat says, have formed a gang in Hollywood that actively steal and or blackball young entertainers' careers, which drives them into madness. For 30 years, they're a group. These aren't three random guys. The way that 
Ricky Smiley kept appearing at all of my auditions is because of Steven said he would tell anybody that listen, they got a gang on that side. They know what it is. Yeah, it was Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey, Bernie Mac. All of these dudes are co entwined and they share secrets. And this is the age of truth. And, and, and the truth doesn't need to be scared of the fact that people tell lies. Cat only mentions three of these group members by name Steve Harvey, Cedric the Entertainer, and Ricky Smiley. Do you think? Drake sold his soul. The soul this soul thing is like some people have taken it like a deeper meaning than what it like what it was. Like there's like selling out that could be like selling your soul, but some people have taken it to like he sits down and puts down like pictures and light, lights fires and is like cutting his hand and stuff like that. So it's like it's like what do you mean sold soul sold his soul, bro? But you will notice throughout the video, he makes bold accusations about many other massive stars like That's Kevin. what that, yo, oh my gosh, Hot Milk Chugger. That's a crazy name, but, and why are you chugging hot milk? Like, I don't know. Anyway, it's like, dude, it's like people really believe that you can like, s like sell your soul, but like, that's just a different type of talk. Like, it's, I, it's not for me to speak on, bro. It's like, it, it is what it is though. Hart and Martin Lawrence, are they also a part of the gang? Well, that's up for you to decide. Wait, what'd you say? Kevin Hart and Martin Lawrence, are they also a part of the gang? Well, that's up for you to decide. If you say that, that's why it's, that's why I just take shit, like the shit that I like is just, I like it surface level, bro. <laughs> I like it surface level. I don't Google every actor and their personal things before I go see a movie, bro. I'm not that type of person that I, I feel like that's what Twitter people do. And they probably don't even do that any, any either, bro. But I feel like there's people that claim, you know, like you shouldn't watch this movie. You shouldn't support this per person. Da, 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 da. And you mean to tell me before you see any movie that you like, you search up every actor, every uh, uh, not even the supporting cast. You search up their past, too. And if they've done anything, you're not seeing the movie. You when you listen to music, you look at the history of each artist the person who produced the beat the person who engineered certain things you're looking th up through all that shit just because you're so pure and you're not you're not about shut the fuck up my nigga shut the fuck up bitch i i hate people like that bro you shouldn't watch this movie because this person makes this nigga what else movie do you watch what games what other games do you play how many fucking voice actors are in that game that probably did some weird shit you should not be playing that game i know your ass you got a Rick and Morty profile picture. Do you know that? Sh like, it's like, shut up, bro. <laughs> Sign up for their program. You get a light skin. Cause Chad, when you get like, when you get too deep into anything, honestly, you're not gonna watch a lot of shit. You're not gonna listen to a lot of music. You're not gonna drive a lot of cars because of who built these cars. You're not gonna use certain microphones. You're not gonna sit in certain chairs. You are not going to be able to buy certain houses if you looked into into the person that made the house, bro. It's just, it's just too much cancel culture to follow, chat. And honestly, I can't do that, bro. If I like something, I like it because I like it. I don't like it because I think this person has good moral values. Like, I just like it because I like it. I don't like stuff because I don't like it. I don't know nothing about that actor from, uh, from Dune, bro. I don't not, I don't like the movie Dune because the actor, uh, still drinks Starbucks or some shit, man. I don't like it because that shit was boring as fuck, man. And Zendaya wasn't really in the movie. Lion ass trailer. Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings competitor. Harry Potter. Get the fuck out of here, nigga. Lion ass nigga. I hate liars. I wish I, I wish I had actual sand in my eyes when I seen that movie. Fuck. Sorry. <laughs> Weird face wife that never do an interview. Oh, in Anyways, let's start with Kat's claims that Cedric the Entertainer and Steve Harvey stole his material. But first, I'm gonna steal your attention for just a minute to tell you about today's sponsor. Have you ever Googled your name and- Good transition. Yo, it, like, this, this, like, your transitions are top notch, bro. Chat, what were we watching where the niggas just started talking about jelly beans? <laughs> I don't know what we was watching, but the nigga just randomly started talking about, like, jelly beans or something. I was like, yo, what? <laughs> 
and seeing yourself on one of those strange sites that has way too much information about you, it feels pretty weird. I'd really rather that kind of stuff not available to anyone. Was the new rock was a new rock star at Tier Zoo? I don't know what it was, but these niggas was talking about <laughs> these niggas started talking about jelly beans, bro. One who's looking for it. Data brokers are making tons of money selling our information to robocallers and spammers. That's why I'm excited to tell oh, you about. Oh, sorry. Uh, no disrespect, dog. I'm just really like curious to what you got to say about the stuff, bro does all this for you and best of all it's all in one app if my info was compromised in the 18 i'm in a meeting so i'm missing all of this a meeting for what and why are you sneak texting on your phone in a meeting i hope you muted the sound yo he said fuck this meeting bro he wish he was somewhere else and your suits look dog shit fuck is you talking about t data breach i wouldn't worry because i know aura <laughs> would be protecting me let aura protect your information <laughs> i just imagine like what was that you heard me fuck nigga Fuck you, your suit, your stupid ass tie, and cut all that hair off, my nigga. Your hairline is receding. Stupid ass company. Stanking here. And the car you driving is busted as hell. The fuck? Shouldn't keep you safe online. You can let people continue to exploit you and profit off your private information, or you can- Damn, how long was it? There we go. Thanks, Aura. Cat claims that both Steve Harvey and Cedric the Entertainer have stolen jokes from him. Cedric did it first on the original Kings of Comedy tour in- two 2000, which at the time was the highest grossing comedy tour in history. Steve Harvey, Cedric the Entertainer, and Bernie Mac playing sold out arenas from coast to coast. The tour grossed over $18 million in its first year. In 1999, both Seagram Americas and HBO sponsored the tour. D.L. Hewley was added and the two-year gross exceeded $37 million. And at the exact same time of this tour, Cat was just starting- Yo, how come, like, D.L. Hewley? Hewley? Maybe he did and I didn't see him, but did he have like, did he have any like movies where he was like the leading role? I'm trying to think. Cause I feel like everybody else, uh, Cedric, Cedric, the entertainer, Steve Harvey, Steve Harvey had a show. Um, he was in shows and movies. Dio Hewley had a show. Wait. The D.L. Hewley show? Is that what it is? D okay, D.L. Hewley show. Hold on, let me see. Uh, I feel like I've seen everybody else in movies and stuff like that. But I've never seen... The Hewleys. He or the Hewleys, I mean. Oh, he did have a show. How many seasons was this? 1998 to two. 2002 this show got four wins and 22 nominations god damn <laughs> my fault I, I never seen the show man i never even knew about the show maybe if i heard like the theme song maybe i did see the show to make a name for himself in Hollywood. He thought that I was just a no-name comedian and that he could take this joke and nobody would know. Right. The issue was that I had already done this particular joke on BET's Comic View twice. This is the joke that Kat is referring to, which was originally performed in 1998 on BET's Comic View program. You should have had your car radio up so loud that you couldn't hear the damn thing when it cut off. It looked like this. You flossing in a six shift convertible. Oh, yeah, I remember this. Using physical comedy, Cat mimics oh, someone trying to assess why their car just broke down while the music is blasting. The alleged theft came from Cedric the Entertainer two years later on the original Kings of Comedy tour, which was in 2000. The premise of Cedric's joke was that white people are obsessed with the moon and space. He says black people are not, but if they gotta go to space, then they would- Nah, bro, I'm not gonna lie. I was out there with all the white people looking up at the moon just like just a few hours ago, chat. I was looking up at that shit. It got- I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. This is absolutely amazing. <laughs> would drive the spaceship like this. We would drive a spaceship like this. Yo, like, they was out there, they was literally clapping. They were like, woo! I ain't gonna lie, I got in, I got in the mood, I was like, yo! <laughs> I did a little, yo! <laughs> you know, it get, it get a little exciting when everybody else start getting hyped. You, you low-key get hyped too, bro. It's a 72 deuce and a quarter, nigga. We, 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 I didn't want to seem like I was hating right or something, man. We be in a space shuttle, nigga, like it's a 72. Dude, nigga, we get us.
Now when you consider the music cue, which is not very common in stand- I was about to say, chat, maybe it's a coincidence, but this is like, this kind of like bar for bar, bar for bar type thing of comedy, that already looks suspicious. Then the side-by-side -side comparison indicates Cedric makes very similar physical movements that Cat did. Cedric says he did not steal the joke, and that if Cat was so upset about it, he had 30 opportunities to speak up. Oh. Can't say you stole one of his jokes. Yeah, like, I mean, it was ridiculous. You know what I mean? It was like the idea of the joke that he was even talking about don't even match up with no timeline. So for me, it was one of those things like- Did you have a conversation? Did you guys sell it? Did you have a conversation with Cat? I've seen this guy 30 times like dog if you literally was that upset, upset about, about it. it like dog why you, him and say, hey, yeah, hey, why say, you say nothing like that don't even make sense but cat says mm. that cedric apologized about stealing the joke years ago and is now lying to the public that he never stole it in the first place him and steve had already apologized for me so i gave him a pat the rock okay so are they are do they post like as the night happens or do they just post once everything is already done Yes. Why would you? The uh, oh, oh, I asked at the same time. So, oh, so it is. So there's clips. There's clips right now. Cause I seen somebody earlier say Triple H walked out to the the game or some shit and all that shit. You sit here and be like, I talked to, I saw Cat 30 times. Why did I give you a pass if you were just gonna lie? So imagine how a young Cat Williams felt seeing his best joke being stolen by one of the biggest comedians in the world on the largest grossing comedy tour in history. We never wrote anything, remember? I'm gonna just wait till, I'm gonna just wait tomorrow because I don't want to keep going. React to it live. Yeah, if I react to it live, I'd just be sitting here. Like you, I wouldn't be able to play the audio. When Cedric the Entertainer starts, he's supposed to be singing, dancing, and telling jokes. That's why he's called the Entertainer. He did four comedy specials. They're so bad, Shannon. They're not available on Netflix or Tubi. Noticing all the backlash, Cedric responded to Kat's comments on Instagram. Revisionist history. Regardless of whatever Kat's opinion, my career can't be reduced to one joke Cat Williams claims as his. Cedric added, I'm a grown-ass man, and none of that sh going to go like you think. But Cedric Ooh. isn't the only one that stole Kat's material. Steve Harvey's theft of Cat's jokes is arguably much worse. What? At the 2005 BET Comedy Awards, Steve Harvey introduced a hot upcoming comedian to the stage by the name of Cat Williams. Cat hit the stage and absolutely dominated this. the crowd with his joke about gas prices. Because the world is crazy right now. What is gas? $600 a damn gallon right now? <laughs> I don't care how much money you got. Gas is entirely too high. Used to be, if you put $15 in your tank, you had time to bond with your vehicle. You had time to put the nozzle in and set the clicker and look through your car and clean off the dashboard. Then Steve Harvey did a joke about gas prices three years later in his comedy special, Still Trippin'. Gas, $4 a gallon. Can't even pump gas like you used to no more. $4 a gallon? You remember when you used to go to pump and put the nozzle in there and hit it? Be sitting there talking, be on your phone, hey, what's happening? Be walking around, cleaning the windshield. It's hard to see this as anything other than blatant theft. Yo, don't I? This guy is great to watch if you want to keep up with the WWE without no. watching it live. Not bar for He's bar. a goat. He posts the shows on TikTok as the show goes on. Not bar for bar. TikTok? But Cat didn't stop there. He continued to expose Steve's long history of suspicious behavior. It started with why Bernie Mac quit the iconic Kings of Comedy tour. Do you consider yourself a king of comedy? They consider that. Oh, that After Bernie left, them same three guys I'm telling you about, the kings, yeah. they came to me. I was supposed to be the fourth king. I got the offer. Then what happened? But I turned it down. Why? Because you shit on Bernie. And I know the truth. You think I'm gonna let you shit on Bernie and then come get me? I'm the next king? Fuck you. Now there has been an infamous beef Fuck between you. Steve Harvey and the late Bernie Mac that fans have known about for years. There were often arguments between the four comedians of who should be the closer or finale of the tour. Bernie Mac. Since Bernie was a much funnier comedian, Steve would get booed by the crowd when he performed after Bernie. Why? Because the whole time Bernie was here, you was acting like- Wait, they was booing him? Come on now. You was funnier than him. It's the still Steve Harvey. Come on now. Because it was your tour. Tell the truth. It was Steve's tour. Not it was going to be called the Kings of Comedy. It was Steve's tour. These are the guys opening for him. 
of course you gotta close if it's your tour. Harvey eventually just ended up being the host of the tour and not performing a full stand-up routine because he just couldn't make the audience laugh as hard as Bernie. Oh. D.L. Hewley, who was also on the tour, even said that Steve never thought Bernie would become successful and when he started getting more opportunities, oh my God, he, was he became hater. jealous. Oh, he was a hater. Oh. Oh. oh my God, Bernie no Mac way. Steve Harvey was because Steve Harvey was getting a lot of network love during the time. Chad, it's always envy. It's always envy. Yo, King, Le Le King, Lee, 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 thank you for the reason. I appreciate you. Bernie Mac, not so much. Yeah, and then Bernie started to get it. So yeah, I think that, you know, Steve at one point was, you know, uber successful. And then Bernie started to, because he didn't ever think he would get the opportunity he got. But once he did, America. Is that Tay? Yeah, that's racist. So, 09, like what year is that? How old are you now? If someone was born in 09, how old are they now? Chat, Let's do the quick math. 15. Yeah. Fuck you. All right. That's why, uh, that's why I got a prediction in the future. Uh, you're like 14, 15. Yeah. You're going to try to go and take the test for your license and you're going to get denied and they're going to spit on you and say, try again. Fuck nigga. And you're you. going to get so embarrassed that you're just going to ride a bike until you're 31. Like we all kind of knew they would. And he decided to go a different way. Eventually. I'm joking, bro. Bernie got sick of Steve hating, realized his worth, and exited the tour, which ended up forcing all four guys to split up. We split up. You wish you would have stayed, kept it together, could have kept it together we, a couple. We we tried everything, but you know, dudes felt like they was movie stars. I never saw myself as a movie star. Steve basically claims that Bernie went Hollywood and acted too good for the guys, and Cat didn't like that. Imagine him coming to tell you another story where he got so big and it was Bernie and them's fault because they wanted to be movie stars. What? You called Ocean Eleven to get that nigga's part. What do you mean you didn't want to be a movie star? Allegedly, Steve even called the producers for the heist comedy film Ocean's Eleven to steal the role of Frank Catton from Bernie Mac. Ocean's Eleven featured a star-studded cast, including George Clooney, uh -huh. Matt Damon, Brad Pitt, Julia Roberts, and Casey Affleck, among others. The film became a huge critical and commercial success, earning over $450 million at the worldwide box office, having a subs- And then it was so good that they dropped an all-woman's version. How did that one go? <laughs> How did that one go? Let's see what Tyrone thinks. <laughs> Substantial role in a film of this magnitude helped the rising trajectory of Bernie Mac's career. An infamous <laughs> GQ article from 2003 released when Bernie Mac himself claimed that Steve was jealous of him from the very beginning. Oh! Overall, Cat is obviously upset about Steve stealing material, but ironically, he was more upset that- Cat Williams is unfunny, Dave is better than- Okay, so saying that Cat Williams is unfunny is a lie. That's a lie. That's, a, that's, that's a, not even a reach. That's just a lie. That Harvey Come tried to now. lie and claim that Bernie went Hollywood on the Kings of Comedy when in reality Steve was so jealous of his success that Bernie couldn't take it anymore and quit. Steve, say something, man. Is this true or not? Speak, bro. Now that he gone, you gonna act like he wanted to be a movie star. You stop it. You stop it. That man was funnier than all of y'all and y'all thought y'all had one over on him. The king is the funniest. Period. Every time. And that's why no audience member was ever swayed. Mm. It didn't matter where Bernie went. You think if Bernie went first, he wasn't the king? <laughs> Get out of here. But Cat Williams and Steve Harvey's beef did not stop there. A few years later in 2008, a show promoter booked Steve Harvey and Cat Williams to co-headline a New Year's Eve stadium show in Detroit. Cat entered his villain arc and challenged Steve to a comedy battle on the Jamie Foxx radio show, to which Steve accepted. You have been the king of comedy as long as we've had one. The second that you get off stage, I need you to understand that that's your final time <laughs> as the king of comedy. Oh my God, that's like, this nigga moving like Kendrick. You got a team of writers. You're going to need about six or seven of them. You can bring the nation. You can bring Rashawn McDonald. You can bring everybody who listens to your radio show. They going to see the truth. And its name is Cat Williams. Uh. Consider yourself warned. What was supposed to be just a comedy show is now some sort of 1v1 battle dubbed the championship of comedy. And Steve responded with this. I'm, not I'm focusing on myself. I'm aligning myself with God. Uh, me accepting this was corny. I think that's what he's about to say. And he's in trouble. But I'm saying this right here, Jamie. A dog <laughs> don't bark at park cars. Basically, Steve's analogy was that he shouldn't respond to Cat Williams. Wait, why do you sound like Martin Luther King or some shit? Saying this right here, Jamie. A dog 
don't bark at parked cars. Basically, Steve's analogy was that he shouldn't respond to Cat Williams because he is too famous and successful. So on New Year's Eve, Steve got on the stage and never addressed or made fun of Cat. That was a big mistake. Yo, Dante, what did you think of Godzilla and Kong? There's no way you just got here, right? I, I feel like you do this, y'all. Like y'all do this on purpose. Please give it up for Steve Harvey one time. Give it up for Steve Harvey. He's an excellent comedian, but he don't want no parts of this in any way, shape, form. I don't know why he came out here with all this money y'all spent on them motherfucking tickets and talked about a lady in the audience for fifteen goddamn minutes. That nigga should have talked about me the way I'm finna talk about his bitch man. Wait, the wait, they actually did the show? Wait, they actually did it? The co the comedy ship the championship of comedy? What? Why haven't I like seen this shit? Yours, nigga, yours. Oh, he got it, he got oh my god, they seen him recording. Oh shit. Oh my god, they almost got his ass out of here. That was like a jump scare. Nigga, you recording? No. No, all right, all right. My fault. I put it up. Wait. Ah, yours, nigga, yours. Right. Nigga, nigga, yeah. the shit because he was a shit in 1968. Nigga, I'm the shit this right, evening. Right, right. Let's fast forward it. To when this disrespectful nigga did something called the original Kings of Comedy. Oh. I'm guessing like I'm guessing uh Patrick did the the text for this. I like how uh nigga is replaced with dude. <laughs> Show you know that nigga's a liar straight up and down. Cat absolutely embarrassed Steve. Oh my he God. claims this was the end of I never I never knew this was a thing his career. Steve told you that he stopped doing stand-up because he has seven TV shows. The only problem is when he stopped stand-up, he didn't have those seven TV shows. He stopped stand-up because he got in a comedy battle called the Championship of Stand-Up Comedy with one Cat Williams in Detroit in front of 10,000 people and lost because Cat Williams said he was actually bald and that was a wig. And I went in and that's why he couldn't do stand-up anymore. Now, Kat isn't very accurate here. Steve had multiple successful arena comedy tours after the championship battle, and Steve was already bald by 2008, so Kat <laughs> didn't really expose him for having fake hair. But is it a coincidence that almost immediately after Kat got on that stage and exposed his biggest hater in the industry, he started his crazy downward spiral? In November of 2008, Williams missed an appearance on Conan O'Brien and was later arrested that evening when officers found three handguns in his car while exiting rapper Jim Jones's studio in New York. That same month, he checked into the Mount Vernon Inn in Sumter, South Carolina. Shortly after checking in, employees reportedly found Williams stumbling around wearing just a bathrobe and a towel wrapped around his head. When police arrived, Williams asked them for directions to the nearest hospital. There, his family convinced him to seek psychiatric help, to which he was eventually hospitalized. He just said that he doesn't trust anyone anymore, that everyone has turned against him. He wasn't really coherent. Pretty much after this, Cat wasn't seen again until 2011. No stand-up performances, no movies, no TV. The only time he was talked about was when he was arrested. In November of 2010, authorities arrested Cat in Coata County, Georgia, after he allegedly stole $3,500 worth of coins and jewelry. Things escalated in June of 2011 when he was arrested in connection with an alleged assault on a tractor driver. He supposedly conspired with three women who attacked the man in his tractor. In 2012, Williams returned to the comedy world with his third HBO comedy special, Catpocalypse. Unfortunately, with the spotlight back on him, Cat fell back into a dangerous cycle as the bizarre behavior continued. In October of 2012, Cat and comedian Faison Love got into a heated argument outside of a Hollywood club Jeez, over a $50,000 debt that Cat owed Love. During the argument, Cat proceeded to pull a gun on Love that wasn't loaded. 
On November 9th, his former assistant, Melissa Shag, claimed that he went into a rage and attacked her the month prior. Then police arrested Kat in Oakland, California on charges of suspicion of assault with a deadly weapon after he allegedly beaten an 18-year-old with a bottle. On November 16th, at the Oracle Arena alien or in start, California, uh, Kat took the stage while having a total public meltdown. For 15 minutes, he seemed to be under the influence, rambling about nothing while taunting members of the audience. Well, give me 20, nigga, that's how much the album costs, fuck boy. But I bet if you can walk to your car, I can show your bitch a dick she'll enjoy. So why don't you take your pussy ass on over there, nigga, before I can catch you. Or you can pull your bank out and I'll match you. But you ain't gonna do shit but get punched in the face. Then the audience began booing him. Boo. Boo. On November 17th, 2012, Williams got involved in a police chase while driving his three-wheeled motorcycle oh, and failing to stop. Oh. Just a week later, Cat was arrested in Seattle, Washington after he allegedly got into a dispute at a bar in the South Lake Union neighborhood. His arrest came after he missed the first night of a planned two-night performance at the Paramount Theater. That same month, he slapped a Target employee in Sacramento for no apparent reason, which was made fun of on late-night television shows like Conan O'Brien. On December 28th, Williams was placed in handcuffs once again Again on child and oh my god <laughs> oh man k you cool man how you doing oh, i'm cooler than a fan my they took my children from me yeah i mean how I was, terrible is that cat's criminal history does not even come close to stopping oh god. here but i'm sure you all get the point he was spiraling hard for years seemingly strung out on drugs or what you doing if that's you bro I, my brain i'm turning i'm turning karen bro i'm suing <laughs> i'm suing and i'm acting like my jaw's broken least experiencing manic episodes. The media called him crazy, a crackhead, and didn't believe anything he was saying since they wrote him off as a madman, but he says he was never under the influence. I am never under the influence of anything. I'm always in my right also, mind. Also, if I was working at Target and like I was just trying to get a bag, bro, I'm flipping the narrative too. That dude was white, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm like, yo, he walked up to me and he called me a cr And like, all I said was, I really liked your I really like your stand up. And he was like, I don't make stand up for I only make stand I only make stand up for black people. That nigga was spitting bars. I was like I was like, yo, Mr. Cat, that's you can't say that. That's racist. He was like, you can't be racist to And I was like, I was like, what? And then he slapped me and said, You you he said, you ought to be out of your rabbit ass mind for thinking I can ever be racist. <laughs> for thinking I can ever be racist to a white boy. And I was like, <gasps> And then I went and cried. I went and cried in the break room for five hours. <laughs> I'm always a physical specimen. And when you see me, I'm much, much bigger than you had thought. Ooh. I have far less play in me than you would like. There seems to be a pattern with comedians in the downward spiral. In 1990, Richard Pryor, who struggled with addictions to women and hard drugs, poured high-proof rum on himself and set himself on fire. His widow, Jennifer Lee Pryor, claimed it was a drug-induced attempt at ending everything. In 1997, Martin Lawrence was coming off the end of his hit sitcom Martin, as well as starring in the blockbuster film Bad Boys. That year, Lawrence allegedly had a meltdown in Los Angeles where he ran into Ventura Boulevard with a gun and threatened tourists and random people. I remember Sources that. Martin began taking psychotropic drugs and having violent outbursts on the set of his movie, A Thin Line Between Love and Hate. Martin would continue his erratic behavior, getting arrested for gun possession and later going to rehab. Robin Williams openly spoke about his lifelong battle with addiction, alcoholism, and depression. Comedian Mark Maron has spoken publicly about having severe depression. Artie Lang and Jim Norton as well. John Belushi, Chris Farley, and Greg Giraldo all died of drug overdoses. It's unclear why comedians seem to struggle with mental health more than others in the entertainment industry while being tasked with creating the most lighthearted content. Deborah Sarani, a clinical psychologist who treats performers with depression and other mental health problems, said comedians often wear what we call the mask of depression, which helps them put on a more acceptable face to the world. But behind that mask, there is a terrible struggle going on. There is a stigma about depression and oftentimes the laughter distracts from feelings of weakness. Cat Williams has had an extremely rough life, starting with being homeless and alone at age 13. That is true, bro. Combine that with the chaotic 
lifestyle of a comedian, constantly being on the road, late nights, irregular sleeping and eating schedules, the pressure to constantly deliver funny and- Usually the, the funniest people, usually the funniest people have kind of been like through a lot or it's like, there was like a, a moment. Like there's just a lot of shit that's been going on that they, the only way to deal with it is like through comedy, bro engaging performances, as well as regularly dealing with hecklers and sometimes unresponsive audiences who make the job mentally taxing. And on top of all of that, add the potentially evil Hollywood gang that Kat says is actively trying to get him to compromise his morals, but when he refuses, they blackball him and run smear campaigns to call him crazy? That is a recipe that would make any man go mad. So the question is, was Kat trying to escape an evil industry, or was he actually a drug-induced madman? Martin tried to put me in my first dress. When he had to go on his hiatus, he tell me, Kat, when I come back, I need you. You my young partner, you my brother in comedy. When I come back, just promise me that my next movie, it'll be me and you. Go do what you gotta do. When you come back, I'm in your movie. Don't trip. I don't need to see the script or nothing. You know we get in that office and this fool pull out Big Mama's house too, where this nigga want me to get in a dress with him. And I'm literally saying to everybody, why is he in a dress again? <laughs> if it isn't obvious, Kat didn't want to wear the dress. Brandon T. Jackson would go on to portray Martin's son, Trent in Big Mama's House, where the two go undercover at an all-girls performing arts school. Unfortunately, years later, Jackson asserted that he did the project for money and was unaware of the repercussions it would have on his career. Well, did you bro, you're in a, like, you're in a, you're in a dress, man. You get like slack when you wore the dress at that moment? Only Cat Williams. Cat Williams was trying to always say, Brandon, Brandon, don't wear a dress. <laughs> you know, he called you or is this? No, he was saying it in the media, so I thought he was heckling me. He was really trying to help me at the time. I didn't know that. I was immature. Right. I feel like, dang, why? I'm trying to, uh, just trying to make it. And then he was trying to warn me, you know, don't get in the dress. Everything went wrong. It's like everything went right. Everything went wrong when I put on that dress. I feel like, um, cause I don't know what other movies he was in. Or if that was like one of the biggest like breaks for him. But it's like if you start off like your first big break. Um, in a dress, you kind of get like it's like it's kind of like then what do, what do we do with you, man? Tropic Thunder. Lottery ticket. Damn, I don't know. I don't know, man. Maybe it was just him. Cause there's a lot of people, there's a lot of comedians who did dresses, but like they were still fine. I don't know what, I don't know what happened with him, but he wasn't like big, big, like, yeah, he was in Tropic Thunder, but he, he, it wasn't like a lead role though. Kat has been discussing this subject for years because this has been a pattern that many have speculated is a humiliation. Yeah, Tyler Perry did like 50 dress movies, but like, that's really, that's, I mean, I feel like that's really just was his thing though. Like he really didn't do nothing outside of that. But Robin Williams did, did that thing in a dress that Mrs. Doubtfire, uh, Eddie Murphy, he, he did some shit in a dress in the movie, right? Or I think he played like a female in a dress. Um, uh, Martin Lawrence, um, but the movie, but, uh, Big Mama, Big Mama's house is fire though. Adam Sandler, yeah, Adam Sandler. So it's like I don't know, bro. Maybe it was just he was just I don't know. He just couldn't find better work after or some shit, man. Ritual: Eddie Murphy, Tyler Perry, Jamie oh, Fox, yeah. Wesley Snipes, oh, Chris Tucker, yeah. Arsenio Hall, Tracy. Okay, Moore. wait. For, to be fair, that wasn't really a dress. It was just like it was. It was just like a crazy like uh like a prince type prince type outfit <laughs> because this has been a pattern that many have <laughs> let's not get too carried away bro it wasn't a dress it was a tight ass outfit man all right even if it was a dress i'd still be siding with my nigga but it wasn't a dress it was a tight ass outfit bro speculated is a human Chat, it don't even matter he was fucking bitches in that movie man Aliation ritual eddie murphy tyler perry jamie fox wesley snipes chris i did not know about wesley snipes that is insane Tucker, Arsenio Hall, Tracy Morgan, the Waynes brothers have all dressed up as women for TV or movie roles. Just before Kevin Hart exploded into fame, he also wore a dress on Saturday Night Live. And even 10 years ago, Kat discussed this. It's two answers. First of all, let's be very, very clear. 
it is possible the that there isn't rhyme, anything sir. funnier than a guy in a dress. And if that's the case, then it might also be said that there's nothing funnier than a black guy in a dress. Okay, well, Kevin doesn't have to worry about what people are going to say about him wearing a dress because of the long line of dress wearing people before him. So. <laughs> yeah, I think we stopped this, though. I think we just got to stop doing, uh, like, as comedians, black comedians uh, probably stopped getting in the dress, you know? Uh, I don't know what other, like, what good idea can, like, movie-wise you can make, but, you know, maybe we just move on, bro. Maybe we just move on. Why? It's been explained. If you don't agree, then then you're um or if you don't understand then like you're either a child um or you're not black so it doesn't really affect you or whatever but it's like you really got to think about it you don't have to be in black you don't have to be in a dress to be funny like you shouldn't have to use that as or think that you have to do that to catapult your career uh you know so now some of us are against the Illuminati and we are against the Illuminati at our own detriment. Because I feel like it's get, it was getting to a point where it's like was normalized, but more people are now realizing like, okay, maybe we don't need to be doing this, bro. Maybe we don't need to be doing this, man. When people are against the Illuminati, then they get punched in the face all the time. The press hates them and nobody likes them. Kat also detailed an Illuminati meeting alongside Ludacris. There was a crossroads where we were both invited to an Illuminati thing and decisions had to be made. So it was both of us, we were equal. One of us had to cut off all their hair and couldn't do the sideburn thing no more with the points. And the next person they said was going to get $200 million because they were going to pay him tip. Nothing wrong with wearing a dress. Then my nigga, go wear a dress. I don't give a fuck. Like, 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 like what? Go wear a dress, my nigga. Like, damn. Are, are you, like, are you personally offended? You wear a dress, bitch? Like, what did you so hurt by, my nigga? They said was going to get $200 million because they were going to pay him 10 million a movie to do 20 movies. And that's how the conversation happened. One of those persons turned out to be ludicrous, and the other person turned out to be Cat Williams. It's really hard to back up any of Cat's claims. And even if the stipulation of getting a $200 million deal is that you have to shave your head and sideburns, that seems like an extremely small compromise. And there are no indications that Ludacris ever sold his soul. I mean, he will tell you. I feel like the world has just made it. I feel like the world has just made it to where, like, you supposed to accept, like, you're supposed to just accept shit. And if you don't accept it, you're a bad person. It's like they're forcing this, they're trying to force this belief on everybody. And it's working with a lot of people to where they're trying to convince me that, like, I, I'm crazy for saying this shit. Like, this should not be a crazy thing to stand for. Like, but it is now. It is. Like, I don't understand, man. Like, I feel like I don't understand how this isn't, like, an argument. It's like goes back to Demir. I don't understand. I just don't get it, bro. I just don't get it. He responded to Cat with a rap song. Never been Illuminati, only Illuminati, and I only left with bitches when coming from any party. Afro with the sideburns, yeah, that's my signature. Addictions on the rise. Comedians check your temperature. Perhaps. <laughs> oh, buddy. It's the most overlooked comment during the interview was Cat's take on Kanye West. I suspect that we're pretty awful people if we say that somebody got a mental illness and then we watch what they do. If you say somebody got special needs, then why would you be watching them and holding them accountable like everybody else? The question of whether someone's actions should be judged differently due to mental illness is complex and multifaceted, and opinions may vary depending on cultural, ethical, and legal perspectives. Mental mm. illness can significantly impact an individual's ability to understand the consequences of their actions, to make rational decisions, or to control their behavior. Kat is not excusing Kanye's behavior, and he definitely says he doesn't agree with what he says, but he's just questioning why people are surprised as his whole career he gave obvious signs, such as claiming that he was a god, and he was praised and uplifted for his outlandish behavior. Now, Kat has Facts. never publicly disclosed any sort of manic or psychiatric problems, but look at how much the world judged him when he was crazy 10 years ago. Versus now, he is saying the exact same things he was saying while he was crazy, but today he is more calm, coherent, and of course, 
entertaining. Now they are quoting his words as prophetic statements of a wise old genius. Oh my God, spit, bro. And every time Kevin Hart posts, they, they showed us same uh, gif of him talking, bro. It's funny how things change. Um, but you know, that's, that's like fans for you though. They just, they go on every trend is, is popular right now, man. They, they go with whatever trend is popular right now, but that's, you know, that's their whole, that's their existence, man. They're, they're fans, bro. They're fans. That's their whole existence. Another, another W video, another amazing video from Patrick CC, the man, the myth, the legend.